Hey, what's going on guys? Mike from the Red Collectors. It's been a while since I've done a video and I think I should just get back into my roots of what I do best and that is trying to bring forward and let people know more about the Dreamcast and the console and its games. So without further ado, let's just get into it. Rarity of games is measured by two things, supply and demand. If there's enough of supply and there's enough of a demand, odds are that game won't be rare. If there's not enough of supply and there is a demand, odds are it will be rare. The whole supply and demand falls into gray areas, common, uncommon, and rarity. I'm gonna be showcasing five games that sit on the rarity of the Dreamcast when it comes to collecting for them. Sonic Adventure. Many of you may ask, why is this in a shadow box? The reason why is because this is one of my rarest games and I wanna keep it in safekeeping, so this is a way to I can display it and keep it safe without ever having to open it up. I do have an actual copy of Sonic Adventure, so there's no reason for me to ever open this up because this has a little bit of a difference where you can do stuff in the original Sonic Adventure and not doing this, and we're gonna get into that right away. Developed by the Sonic team, released July 15th, 1999, and sold an undisclosed amount. Sonic Limited Edition was a pre-release of Sonic Adventure, only available through rental at Hollywood Video, months before the release of the full game. Main differences between Sonic Adventure and Sonic Limited Edition are internet features and memory card saving were disabled on this version of the game. The reason why is obviously it's a rental only, so renting it and trying to save, I guess Sega didn't really want that to happen, so when they created this limited edition, the save feature was turned off and not sure why that would be an actual thing because when you wanna rent a system, wouldn't you wanna save? Like if I rented a PlayStation 1 when I had, when I had it when I was a kid, if I put in a memory card, I would hope I could save because if I want to buy the game, I can continue on from there. But they turned off this feature for that purpose alone. I'm glad I got this early on in the collection and I was able to you know, put in the shadow box and keep it for safekeeping. And I'm happy that this is on my shelf. This is a variant of a game, so I'm not going for variances of a full collection. Uh, there are a few other variances on the list that I'm going to be showcasing. Uh, this being one of them. Speaking of variants, here's another one, Speed Devils. Now, this one isn't the most rare game or one of the rarest games on the system because the reason why there is another variant, it's it's just based off of the label. This right here alone, Walmart deemed this to be not for children, so they actually went back to the publisher and said, reprint this and there is a limited edition or there's actually a reprinted edition that does not have this image. It just says Speed Devils on it. And they sold it through Walmart and that's it. So like I said, this one is not a rare game. There is a variant of the rare game. Speed Devils alternate label. Speed Devils was released on October 14th, 1999 and Walmart felt that the demonic image on the game's cover wasn't suitable for the retail shelves. So Walmart demanded a reprint of the game without an image and then place them back on circulation. Earliest information of the release date of the Speed Devils clean cover was found as a receipt in December 1999 from Walmart. Probably not a variant that I'm gonna go after. I'm just going for the complete North American set. So I'm happy to have this one. I would love to come across that one at a Goodwill, but odds are I'm not gonna have to come across that. Bangayo, developed by Treasure, released March 21st, 2001, sold 14,420 units. Bangayo is a multi-directional shooter. It was originally an N64 title and had limited run of 10,000 games in Japan. Once ported over to the Dreamcast, the team changed gameplay elements, graphics, and audio. You are two pilots, Ricky and Mamie, sent to stop an evil crime syndicate. Ricky and Mamie can be switched on the fly in Bangayo and each offer a different weapons mechanics. Much like any other shooter, weapon power-ups upgrades are found in the wreckage scattered throughout the level. The print run of this is fairly low, 14,000 units, give or take, not including ones that didn't sell. And the fact that the low print run creates a high demand for this game, therefore putting it in the rarity realm of about 11 or 12 on my app list. But the actual going rate for it on the same app isn't very high, $110, not too steep, but does fetch a pretty penny. Gigawing, two games that are one of the greatest shooters on the actual platform, and they do search a high price and a high demand. This roughly fetches about $100 North American or $100 Canadian. I was, again, lucky to get this early on into my collection due to its ability to deliver a remarkable bullet hell style shooter ported from the CPS2 arcade to the home console. 
As a player, you have four playable pilots, each with their individual storylines. A cool feature in Giga Wing is while playing multiplayer, each player chooses their pilot and a new story unfolds, each with a good and bad ending. Published by Capcom, developed by Takumi Corporation, and released in July 19, 2000. My saving grace for this game alone to play is the Unlimited Continues because a bullet hell, if you haven't played a bullet hell, it's exactly what it sounds like. There is literally thousands of bullets on screen and you're trying to avoid them as much as possible. And unless you're very precise, which I'm not, it's saving grace is the fact that a continuing system is reason why I didn't pull my hair out, lack thereof. And being able to play it thoroughly through and enjoy it as much as I did. Project Justice. Developed by Capcom and released December 17, 2000, Project Justice is a 3D fighting game with a sequel to the PS1 classic Rival Schools. Project Justice was originally an arcade game early in 2000 and was quickly ported to the Dreamcast. Project Justice uses a unique fighting style. It ditches its traditional 2 on 2 tag battle that was featured in Rival Schools and instead adds one more character for a 3 on 3 tag battle. At any time you can match the 3 attack buttons to unleash a party up attack. The party attack can change based on which character the player is controlling. With 20 playable characters, this is a very fun 3D action fighter that lends its style to, you know, the Mortal Kombat's and the Soul Calibers of the 3D platform where you can pretty much just, you know, wander around and avoid attacks as much as possible. The, the saving grace on this, which I really do enjoy, is the party attack. You can, again, match the three buttons and unleash an amazing combo system that fills the screen and is wickedly bright. Project Justice fetches about $130 Canadian and I've seen complete listings go up even higher depending on obviously if they're sealed and the condition that they're in. I was again lucky to get this from Sid Bolton, the late great Sid Bolton. He passed away last year. He gave me this on a solid, solid deal and I'm gonna cherish this forever because uh, of the person that gave this to me and what a great game it actually became. I'm gonna be going through a lot of my Dreamcast games and bring forward the rarities as to why they're rare and discuss a little bit more information of the games that not many people have in their collections or not many people know about and bring them to the forefront for you to see. Please like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you guys think. Thanks guys.